Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Dear viewers, welcome back again. I'm just going to jump again to Alison now. Alison, <laughs> um, our young people, you know, they are very ambitious. They are very um, dream about the successful life. And they are doing well as well. Education has changed in UK. And a lot of, especially our Asian guys, our Bangladeshi young boys and girls are doing very well. You know, I just recently found out there are 45 young boys and girls in Cambridge, 45 boys, Oxford and Cambridge together, 45. It's, it's, it's like a dream for us. It's amazing to know. And there are a lot of young people are very successful in business too. So if we say, if they're dreaming high, what, do they have to follow a routine to become successful or just like, I want to become successful, that's my dream? I think you have to have a lot of, if you have ambitions and you have a belief in yourself and someone is encouraging you, then quite often that dream will come true. Sometimes you get derailed on the way, but you have to put the effort in. It's no good saying I'm going to be Mo Farah if you don't actually go out and get out in the green, mm. if you go out every morning and do that run. My son did, a, did the marathon last year and it meant he had to get up and do training and go to work and come home and do training. So unless you're prepared to put the time into something you really believe in, then it won't always happen. But it's also about believing that you can get there. And knowing that success isn't just about going to Oxford or Cambridge, success is actually also about being able to be a good parent, it's about spending time and doing things in your community, it's about your belief. Happiness isn't just about money or academic achievement, happiness is actually knowing that you're okay with yourself. How and important is the support, like your family support, your friends support and people you know, they support you is that really really it is crucial really important. or just like i could do it myself some people can do it okay. themselves but that's unusual you need in people who believe in you who say to you i think that you will make a difference i think you can do it i believe that you could get to cambridge i believe that you could go to university um 10 years ago i was walking down commercial road with a mum who I knew, and I said to her, she said, oh, you know, I got married at 17, I've got my four children, my four children are doing well, my job in life is to do well, is to get my children to be a good mother. She said, but you know, I'd really like to have gone to university. And I said to her, you know, there's no reason why you can't go to college and do something. Earlier this week, she sent me a text and said, I had my first wage packet mm. last month. I was able to send some money back home to my village back in Bangladesh. And my children are able to go to school now and say both my parents are working. Oh. That doesn't mean to say that person hasn't gone to university. Maybe they wanted to go to university then. Another friend of mine did really well in her exams in Somalia and then the war broke out. And she then spent the next two years, rather than going to do medicine, she spent two years living in a refugee camp. She came to England, her children are doing very well at secondary school, and she's been part of a campaign through London Citizens in helping to get landlords to do reduced rates so that Syrian refugees mm -hmm. could come to this country and stay in her hamlets. And she hasn't achieved in the normal way of achievement, she's achieved through being a good supportive parent to her children. She, she knows that her children who want to do, go to Cambridge or Oxford need to do things not just in school and they're now in the Air Cadets, they go to running club at Victoria Park. But she herself is giving back by speaking at meetings to encourage other people to do that. So you don't have to be successful in the normal way of, oh, only successful people have lots of money and have been to university. You can be successful if you're a good mum or a good dad. You can be successful if you share your talents and your beliefs with other people. It's amazing. Thank you. Sir, Yung Chi, do you do what you do? <laughs> <laughs> um, how long have you been doing it? Um, so far, two and a half years. Um, what's your position in, in a level of uh, black At the belt? moment, officially, I'm an assistant instructor. Mm. So, yeah, I just recently passed my grading, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> no one messing with you. <laughs> um, we're quite friendly. That's not the idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, what do you want to see? How do you, where do you want to see yourself in five years' time? If you ask in me. five years' time? I mean, uh, currently, I'm a legal executive, 
and I'm actually on an LPC course to become a solicitor for my firm. So uh, in five years time, I would like to be a very successful solicitor, you know, a criminal solicitor, in fact. Wow. You know, so um, to go that far, did you have to look at any role models or did you have to, is, has anyone spurred you to be in that position? Uh, indeed. Uh, for example, the first one I would have to pick up was probably my dad, my father. Um, he's never forced me to do anything I don't want to, you know. What's his name? Uh, Chung. Chung. Yeah. And, he um, must be proud of you. <laughs> very, very much, very much. Even though he doesn't say it because of the Chinese parents' way. <laughs> Okay. But I can sense that. You can definitely can sense. And um, just, yeah, my father in particular is... Can you say it, lo you love him in, in public? I do. I love you, Dad. Thank you. Yeah. That's amazing. We need to break that chain. Yeah, you, I mean... We need to break that yeah. chain, like, okay, fine, you couldn't say, or I could say, I'm proud of him. Like you said, he's yeah. he was the role model. So, yeah. sorry. Just the, his, the way he supported the family, you know. Uh, Maybe he doesn't have time for, for, for me sometimes, but that's understandable. I do understand. But generally, every time he comes home, he's, he's always, I always look up to him because what he did, what he achieved, you know. And uh, like Nelson was saying, it doesn't have to be money. Mm. You know, just when he comes back, his sense of fulfillment. You know, he was, he was very proud when he bought his first flat. You know, and that, that really spoke to me that you don't need a lot to be happy, you know. Fantastic, man. Um, I'll come back to you when you <laughs> mention your mother. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to mention that now? No, I won't mention it now. Okay. My mother, absolutely 100% oh. devoted housewife. Without her, uh, the house would collapse. <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> uh, she's the one that keeps everything together as a, as a family, along with my father. They both are just yin and yang. Fantastic. Come on, can I come to you? Um, you, are, you? What's your ambitions, first thing? Because I've been watching some of your um, videos and uh, mu movie clips. <laughs> Thank you and, for watching. Um, did you say punching him? <laughs> 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 and um, so you, lo you look very um, ambitious. Uh, yeah. Um. Okay, hold on. Can I have a, this phone here? Uh, Asalaamu As Alaikum, Kola. Hello, Hello. As Alaikum. Wa Alaikum As Salaam. What's your name, sister? My name's Uzma, I'm a parent from Mary Richardson School. Oh, First great. of all, I'd like to congratulate for um, bringing up this topic on education and good evening to all your guests. Um, it's interesting to hear about individual personal experience on bullying, marriages, etc. Brilliant, thank you. And um, I just, obviously, um, <laughs> What Alison does for our school is fantastic. She helps everyone, all the parents in our school in the community. She tried to bring all the faith. Uh, obviously, we're living in an um, ethnic minority. We share different faiths and cultures. So I um, would like to say thanks to Alison for doing so much for our parents. She's a star. Like She's say, my role uh, model. Sorry, brother? She's a star, actually. She is a star. She's and, amazing. Uh, we, we, we don't know what we'd do without her. And also we just like to bring up, obviously, we were talking about the family and the education. Um, obviously, bullying is a big issue. Um, just for, like, we are parents, we are, our, we are the first educator to our parents, and we are role models to our, to our children. So um, we need to engage with our parents, as all of you have mentioned. And I think it's important for children to, obviously, after school, we go. We take our children to the mosque, and it, which is fantastic. They need to learn about the faith and the imam. Also, it's important for them to join other clubs. Like um, one of your um, guests talked about how he overcome bullying through going to martial arts. Yeah. So, if a lot of children join sports club, perhaps through that they can, you know, get over bullying or express their feelings. Um, joining drama groups, even what Alison said was um, joining cadets. And also, I think Duke of Edinburgh Award is very important. It boosts up children's confidence. Fantastic. And it helps children and youth interact with other children and youth with different backgrounds. They understand and learn valuing each other and respect. 
And I think one of the main culprits in our household is the modern technology. Phones and iPad, either you say, see children on the iPad and gadgets. So interaction is very limited now. And I think we all we need to work out on that because family time, quality time is very important. Mm. And I'm just enjoying listening to everyone. <laughs> Thank you. That's true. Thank you for your call. And I uh, once took husband's husband ice skating at Canary Wharf with two of her children. Fantastic. <laughs> Sister, are you still there? Yeah, yeah I'm listening. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your call, and, and uh, we appreciate your call. And um, okay. thank you. You know, that's fantastic. You know, like um, people do learn from the things we talk about, and, you know, like they appreciate. Um, yes, your ambition. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an actress. I gave up my full-time job to become an actress. So wow, that's a big sacrifice. Right? Yes, yeah, so it took a few years of planning to do, um, but my dream is I want to win an Oscar. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I've already written my Oscar speech already. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't need to become famous. I don't need like, the money, the fame. I, just, I love it so much that I want to keep on doing it, really. And I think you're good at this, as well. honestly. I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not just saying just because you're in my show. But I, I watched some of your uh, stuff and I really, really liked it. And particular uh, role model do you follow? Anyone or uh, anything? In terms of the film industry, because I have a few role models, um, I love Bruce Lee. absolutely mm. love him. Um, not just because of his skills as a martial artist, but the belief that he had in himself. And, you know, he did philosophy as well. So he used to think really deeply about things. Like, if I paraphrase him he said about it's not about being able to do 10,000 kicks it's being able to do one kick and practicing it 10,000 times he was hard working that much you know the things we see in the tv and um, he used to be actor so in real life is he was he like that Bruce Lee uh, I, I didn't know him personally I wish okay. I did <laughs> um, but people said that he used to think really deeply about things but ultimately he was a human being so he had his flaws as well he wasn't like a god, like you see in some films. Of course not. So, you know, like um, like Kung Fu, you know, people always relate to Bruce Lee's like Kung Fu. He actually is the brain behind the Kung Fu. Is that how it is? Uh, <coughs> uh, in terms of promotion of Kung Fu. Okay. Yeah, he's definitely the uh, front figure, you know, in terms of advertising Kung Fu into the Western country and Europe. So definitely the person, you know. Yeah, my children used to watch him. <laughs> I know, we all did actually, young yeah, days. Yeah. I mean, he was something mm. to look up to, of mm. course. And um, very disciplined lifestyle he had. And um, have you, I'm sure some of your parents probably met him, no? Um, I'm afraid not. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's a good philosophy to follow as well. I and mean, when, when you have ambitions and when you have people in front of you, then it's, it's, it helps to... Either you copy or do your own way, but it helps you to reach that part, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I love Angela Jolie as well, um, because of the person that she is. She gives a third of her wealth to charity. Which yeah. I, I no. think it's amazing that you can share these things and not have to tell the whole world that you're helping other people, which I really love. If you want to share a charity or charity, Alison's here. She looks after a lot of homeless people. That's, that's <laughs> wonderful. <Don't personally. laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, where do you always see yourself in the next five years? With the Oscar. Do, do you have a plan <laughs> and ready and you're meeting the right people? Um, it's just going to castings, taking opportunities, really. Um, there's a show called Brooklyn Nine-Nine on TV. I don't know if you've seen it before. Uh, I love that show. And I told my mum, but I've decided I will be on that show at some point. That's great, man. That's great. <laughs> um, Alison, I know um, a lot of people know you and watching and looking at you. Mm. And um, you do a lot of um, community stuff. It's not that you only your job, but you do it beyond your time. And even today, thank you for coming in. You also look after a lot of churches, like have the homeless people, and you organize food, you cook food, and you take it to yourself and give it in. How does that come about? How do you do it? Do you have a team? And <coughs> it came about because there is a charity in Tar Hamlets called Growth where. Um, Homeless guests stay in different churches, um, seven different churches, each one, uh, one each night over the period of the winter. So every Thursday they're in Shadwell, every Wednesday they're in Marlend. And it struck me that, and those churches, they do it for the winter months, provide 
um, food for those guests and sit down and eat with them. And I was very aware that um, some of my Muslim friends would like to help and volunteer. So in fact we have set up a project now where every two to three weeks now some of the parents from Marion Richardson School cook for the Growth Night Shelter. So six people volunteer their food, two people do chicken curry, one does dal, one does rice, one does a vegetarian and one does a pudding. And then one or two of the sisters and a couple of the fathers now come and help. One of the fathers Zahid is coming next Thursday and he's going to be putting, making up the beds for the homeless mm. people. Another sister is coming to help me serve. And it's important that Christians and Muslims can come together and learn from each other. How does it feel to you? I mean, you started it, uh, I'm assuming. <laughs> How does it feel to you? Does it give, what kind of impression do you get or satisfaction It gives me get? great excitement that people can get to know each other beyond just seeing, oh, some of my Muslim friends have said, we didn't realize that Christians did charity. And some of the Christians will say, we wow. didn't realize that Muslims wanted to get involved with us and treat people with respect and treat homeless people with respect. And one of the things the children did in the school was we had a big sock appeal just before Christmas. Every class had a big sock to fill up with socks for the homeless. And they collected 312 pairs of socks, which meant that all the homeless guests now will get a couple of new pairs of socks every night mm -hmm. over the winter, which has been fantastic. And I think that change can bring, I would love to see in the next five years more joint projects, charitable projects, more coming together of people, understanding each other's perspective and sitting down and talking to one another. How do you meet these people, those uh, the lovely sisters and brothers who will come in and help I you? I just How ask them to volunteer and they do. Oh, people just come up to me. People now know, um, we have a group called Wasala, which means connect in Arabic, to connect. And we have 15, 14 women from seven different nationalities come and talk together about their beliefs and their uh, how they are being parents together. They are Hindu, Christian, Muslim, and that's been exciting to do that. And they've p spread the word. Um, and people now just come up to me and say, Alison, I want to volunteer for the night shelter. How do I do it? So I haven't got a shortage of people wanting to volunteer now. Amazing. You know, I've done it once. I've done it he once. Came on it's not yeah. enough. It's <coughs> not enough, of course. I'll come back to it. And I really enjoyed it. I took a few of my friends mm. there, and for them, it's the first time going to church and helping uh, homeless people and, and amazingly, amazingly th you connect with people then you appreciate what you actually have otherwise you don't that's 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 the beauty of it um, one day one of the guests started crying and um, fortunately there was a Bengali father with me helping that day and he said oh what it is is that this is the f this man has said that it's the first home cooked Bengali food he's had since he left his family three or four months ago. Oh man! And that was just so important to share that. But next week, I know we've got Algerian food, we've got some West Indian food, and we've got some Bengali food all going to be served on the same night. So it's quite a interesting menu we'll have next Thursday. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> Come That's along good. and join us. Brilliant. Um, you guys are young. I mean. What uh, Alison achieved, actually, it's amazing. You know, bringing all those different nationalities together and do that. If you think about doing something in, in that line, how would you do it? Would you do it differently or how would you do it? Because mm, my job is quite confining. So I would have to do it through my uh, martial art experience. So I would invite people to come along to my uh, martial art class. And regardless of race, regardless of religion, you know, just come along. And to be honest, once you start sweating together, you know, you don't care who you are. <laughs> and it's, it's just fantastic to bring people together. And then you find out you have a lot in common, you know, yeah. a lot in common, you know. Do you feel as a, um, um, f like, are we connecting with people? Do we feel like connecting with people? Do you think, is, is, is it difficult to connect with people, you feel? Um, would you go out and speak to anybody from Bangladeshi or whatever? Hi, mate, are you doing Salam Alaikum or something like that? Would you? For me personally, I would. But that's due to my line of work okay. and, and my martial arts experience. Okay. You know, because, again, like I said, we have a lot more in common than we think we do. But I do feel people in general don't have that capacity to, be, uh, to connect, you know, on that level. Because, again, we look different. And that's, mm. that's the first stage, really. But once you go beyond that stage, 
that's it. It's very easy. Yeah, because I remember when I, when I first came in this country in the 80s, I'm talking about, you would go out and people would say hello to you and people would say good morning to you and sometimes you get switches, but probably we were young those days. Um, I'm sure it's happening even now. I'm not saying it's not, it never happens. Mm -hmm. But I think it's quite less, you know, we don't, we're not doing that level. <coughs> um, do, do you feel like that? Are we not connect enough with Connecting people? Connecting with people, yeah. Yes, I, th I think it's really important to connect, but we are hesitant to. Some of it is because of safety. Like, for example, when you're on the tube, it's a bit strange if someone just starts randomly saying hello to everyone, really. You think, why are they talking to me? I, I don't know them. So some of it, I, th I think it's to do with safety a lot. Because we just had a phone call. She was saying, like, we are using our pads now. We are using our phone now. We are doing text messages, Facebook. So we're not talking to humans anymore, like, directly, like I'm talking to you now. It's more of a, if you go to your home now, everyone's in their own room. They're using their own stuff. Even if from this room to another room, they'll text, Mom, I want tea. Mom, I want my food. And she will say, text, oh, it's ready now. Have it. So they don't <laughs> need to you get me. So this can be a, in the long term, what do you think? How, we, how far are we going, man? I think that's too much already. Like, if you're at home, you don't need to text who's in the next room. We can just go and talk with them, really. Um, at home, when we have dinner, I make it a rule. We're not allowed to have the TV on during dinner because we have to talk to each other. So I think maybe it's making rules like that, uh, how much you can use your phone, how much you can use your iPad. And when you're on tube, why don't you just read the newspaper and give it to the person next to you once you've finished it, rather than, you know, play Candy Crush on your phone. <laughs> Yeah, that's good, actually. I think we should. I mean, mm. we can't blame <coughs> others apart from ourselves. Like, am I playing the role? Alison, go. I was going to say, you said about people you admire. Uh, five years ago, I sat in a meeting in one of the banks, and I met a young man called Carver Malik, who was a lawyer at Clifford Chance. And he said, I'd really like to get his Pakistani background. He said, I'd love to get uh, families doing more things together. And so what he did, he works 80 hours a week as a lawyer, he set up a charity called Apples and Pears. Apples and Pears now pays for family outings from 17 different schools in Tower Hamlets and Southwark and Greenwich, and they give money to the grant. So our school gets £5,000 a year from Apples and Pears charity. Wow. But we also get people from the city, lawyers, bankers, everybody, and they come and help on these trips. And so we can get Families mixing. I'm doing a trip on Saturday. We've got Somali, Mar Mauritian, we've got Chinese, we've got white British, and we've got Bangladeshis all going out together, all funded by this charity that this young man who works 80 hours a week as a lawyer has set up. Wow. So that blessing, is someone who is, you know, impressive to talk about. Fantastic. Let's bring you on the show. Um, you have one minute to say to our viewers your last words and your family too. Well, Love your dad and mum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, in terms of education, then I would say just, you know, there's, be brave, you know. Be, you know, because again, don't look at the grade so much, you know. Think about what you are learning, you know. And just explore, to be honest. There's nothing you can't achieve if you believe. Thank you. Um, come on, you've got a one minute to tell our viewers okay. about your stuff and your ambition and everything else. Okay, so hi to my mum first. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> hi mum, I love you. Um, you're a role model, really. Um, I'd say follow your dreams, really, as long as they don't hurt other people. And because the show is about education today, I'd say enjoy going to school, enjoy learning. And if you don't, then talk to someone because there might be something wrong if you don't like going to school. It's a privilege education fantastic you know we want to see before um, next year you're in some uh, big movies is <laughs> that going to be a, a I have one coming out this year um, I made three feature films last year okay. one there are a lot of year. young people are watching probably they want to become actors mm -hmm. this is quite ambitious people young for young people they want to be a rock star they want to be a you know actors what do they have to do to find the right person what did you do if you could tell our viewers um, what did I do um, really, really want it, and if you're starting out, maybe go to a local drama school, an uh, amateur group, and they can show you that direction, yeah. like a Saturday drama school or something. Okay, and if you want to find a part in the movie or in, in a drama, what do you do? Do you go through the uh, people you know, or you have uh, some kind of agents and all that? And there's a website called Casting Corps Pro, and you can find yeah. agents on there and also apply for jobs there. 
castingcorpro.com or .co.uk. Great. Thank you for sharing with us. Alison, you're uh, one and a half I'll be minutes. retired. In, half in, in five years' time, I'll be retired. <laughs> <laughs> so, but what I would love is that people learn how to connect with each other. I can sit and talk to Carmen, and within five minutes, we'll find something we're similar about. And my favourite phrase is, we connect through our sameness and we grow through our differences. And we need to find ways of connecting in our society so that we can learn and grow together. And that's education and social. Fantastic. You know, I'm really, really um, um, feel b quite bad because, you know, you, eat, you, you, you went to the pond and had a swim. I'm scared, man. <laughs> You've done that. That's amazing. And you had the fish from and the And I survived. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a beautiful. You know, like the respect you showed for you've been to Bangladesh, you met people, you stayed there for 14 days. And the way you show the respect, it's amazing. I and mean, we all can learn from that. You know, wherever we are, we respect people. And, and the difference is always going to be there. We can't change that. Dear viewers, um, thank you for staying with us. We spoke a lot and um, thank you for the calls as well. And I'm sure you have learned something and it, it, it shows. It shows like the, the, if you really want to connect with people, if you want to meet people, it's up to us. No, we can't keep on saying, oh, they're doing this, they're doing that. No, you do what you've got to do. You could join us and with the homeless people and make food for them. You could go out and say hello to people, give food to the young people. It's the young people we're looking up to. They are our future. So if you respect them, they'll respect you back. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. We don't expect they to keep on coming, but the young people. And now if you show respect today, hopefully tomorrow they will show the respect as well. If we said anything wrong, please do forgive us and, and keep us in your dua and hope to see you next week, inshallah. Thank you for being with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.